Hello. Yep, this is an intro. And I'll be saying all that hello, hi, it's Anne, I'm back, da 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 da, in a couple of seconds. Anyway, Cage Ling. Second look with Cage Ling. I went down this way. That you couldn't tell. Anyway, follow me. Hello, it's me, it's Ann, I'm back. Yes, hi. Now, if you wonder where I've been, no, I'm not going to apologize because it, it's it's the way life works. I've been writing for NaNoWriMo. I've been writing for my school class. I've been fiddling about with new equipment. Um, we're making some changes in our room. I'm working on a bunch of handcraft items for the holiday upcoming for Christmas and all that kind of stuff. And I just didn't get to filming. Anyway, people have asked me a couple of times to do some more with the Cageling palette. So I'm going to do some more with the Cageling palette. I'm thinking since I did the reds and stuff last time, I'm going to head down this way. We'll see what happens. And yes, I have a rather interesting change over this way. I actually have a fairly large television as my computer screen right now. Sometimes things just happen and you do with what you must. <laughs> anyway, let us get started. Face is clean. Threw some moisturizer at it. Yes, the purple is finally starting to grow up. This stuff said 30 washes. And they must mean, because they were talking about it being, you know, fairly quick to get rid of. And it's like, I don't wash my hair every single day. I just don't. For one thing, it falls out fast enough with the autoimmune issues. And... Yeah, see, nice and it's getting thin up here. So, put that back so it's out of my face. Now, one of the other things that happened is that little elf compact that I like hit seriously hit pan in, but I was still using. Well, it got dropped in the floor, and what was left in it shattered. So, it went bye-bye. Um, I pulled out my new e.l.f. compact. So, it's still the same color. But, that's the way that is. Now, I've been rearranging stuff and fiddling with stuff. Just because we're kind of in a... I guess you could say a fall cleaning as opposed to a spring cleaning. But what the heck, you know? We do that, yeah, we do this about every six months. Jim and I have pieced together, what is it now, five quilt tops? Yeah. Five quilt tops, because our. Son and daughter-in-law are getting a new blanket. Both of the grandkids are getting a new blanket. My daughter-in-law's mom is getting a new blanket. And we're getting a new blanket. So, that's two king-size quilts. <laughs> yeah! A queen and two twins. Luckily, in some ways, I kind of cheat. I either do string or yarn ties or just do little tack st stitches here and there. I do not do big, funky, fancy, quilted stuff. I don't have the hands for it and I don't have the money for it. So, yeah, because you can either buy 
a quilting setup, but we'll do all this funky stuff with the stitch work. Or you can go to a quilting shop and rent time on their machine. We've got one of those in our little town. I don't have that freight. I just, I don't have that freight. That's a lot of money. Mm. No, I'll spend it on Christmas presents instead of... So, yeah, I sit and we, we throw everything out on the floor, get it all lined up, and then safety pin the heck out of it. And then go back and go, okay, now that we've safety pinned the heck out of it, let me get in there with the needle and thread and start doing the thing. And at some point, I will have to show you the Tinker Toy that we kind of slapped together over at the thrift store. Jim found this thing. It's, it's one of those little boxes with the silicone stuff in it that's got holes in it that you can put things like nipples and... Um, small baby items and the nipple rings and all that kind of stuff to put in the dishwasher. Well, the holes in this thing are about the right size to take these. And with some elastic that I took off of pairs of shoes and that kind of stuff, you know, where they, inexpensive shoes and they've got them elastic band together to keep the pairs together. Well, I took some of that and I went around, because there's also piercings that are all the way around the outside on the hard plastic frame, and I put loops by, you know, just threading the elastic through the holes in and out like you would with a pair of shoes. And it's a pretty interesting little setup because I can take brushes like this and go up through that elastic and it holds them to dry. And then if I open the top, I can go and this is then hanging to dry. And it takes up a whole lot less counter space. The other thing is, it's a, just about wide enough that with these long handled brushes, you can just pass it straight through. Yes, it would be laying flat instead of hanging, but still, it's like not like it's laying on a towel, which was what I was doing before this thing came into the came in through the door. I'm still making changes to my new backdrop thing. I'm putting new stuff up and taking stuff down. I still need to start getting more twigs and things, bare branches and stuff to go into my little pot over here. <clears throat> While I'm sitting around, as long as my hands are working, I'm also doing these. Okay? See this? It's cotton. It's some of the softest cotton I have ever encountered. It's wonderful. And it does this really, really well. Put a little micellar water on it and take the gunk off your face. They're wonderful. And just like the fancy ones that you pay, I don't know how much for, um, little rounds with the kind of fuzzy stuff, kind of like the uh, the lo the oblong makeup wipe. Um, little funky towels. You just put some water on it and go on. I can just drop these in a little bag and throw them in the laundry. There they go. On days that my hands are not hurting too bad, I work on them. Sitting here watching the videos that some of the rest of you do. Or watching the news, seeing what's going on. Anyway, that was my favorite white base that I get from Shop Miss A. I love that stuff. It is my all-time 
favorite. Plus, it only costs a dollar. Who would think I am that cheap? That would be me. Yes, I've been working on the stretching on my ears, too. I've got the upper one up to a 10. This one down here is an 8. And I just took my earrings and passed them through the little tunnel. I've only got one more stretch I'm doing. I'm going to move the 8 up to here and put a 6 in here. Because 8s and 6s for the little tunnels, I can find individual pieces by size now that's these are gauges it's six gauge which is a four millimeter hole and the eight gauge which is a three millimeter hole but those even though they're small you can usually find an individual set of alternate tunnels that you can change out and all that stuff and I'm going, you know, I think that should be plenty big enough. Because I'm really just trying to make sure I've got a good metal in my ears. These are both 316 stainless. I want to make sure I've got decent metal in my ears because some of my jewelry is really inexpensive. No really inexpensive like a dollar and I don't want to take the chance that I am going to end up with a metal reaction or you know <coughs> excuse me a junk jewelry reaction with my ears so if I put the tunnel in now Nikki Raven was talking about this when she started doing her her stretch and that's where I got the idea to try it. I am not going to go quite as large as she did. She's actually, hers have gotten large enough that she can get some of the tunnels that have the decorations already on them. Those come in slightly larger sizes than I'm going, but I've got a ton of inexpensive earrings, so I'm not overly worried about having nothing to work with. Let's see. Yeah, I know. I said I was going to work down here, but I'm starting up here with this mat called Dove, which is pale lavender. A little bit of fallout there. Now, Yes, I have hooded eyes, which means I'm going to be putting color higher than a lot of people would otherwise. Now, there's a difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes. Hooded eyes, when you open your eyes, they look like this. The upper lid folds right down to the eyelash line deep set eyes yes it's going to fold and crease but it's folding back in and you're going to get transfer very similar but you have a lot more eye space to work with you still have to do some of it above where your normal crease is to make sure that when your eyes are open they're going to be able to see everything or at least most of your colors Now, if you really want a good tutorial on the difference between hooded eyes and deep set eyes, you need to go watch Angie on 4F Beauty. Because, unlike me, she has deep set eyes. And she can show you the big difference. The other thing I do, because I don't have a lot of room for colors and stuff, is I use smaller brushes. I don't get the big foofy blenders 
that other people use because my eyes are too small for those to make any sense. I take one of those big floofies and it'll cover the whole eye in one swipe, which is not what I'm looking for. Now, let's see what I'm going to do next. Again, that was the lavender, and it's called Dove. Yes, I'm looking over my shoulder at my monitor to make sure I'm actually in frame. Let's see. I think... Now, most of the colors I want to use at this point have at least some shimmer, so I am going to be going back and forth as to whether or not I'm going to spray them. Part of it's going to be, you know, what it feels like, what it looks like once I put it on. Anyway, I think I'm going to take this purple, which is a lighter shimmer, but just a bit darker than Dove, and I'm still trying to figure this one out. It's called Flamingo looks a little more purple than I would expect for a flamingo. I'm going to start with it dry and we'll see where we go. I actually kind of like that. I'm just going to keep that mostly towards the center here because I've got there's this wonderful color up here that's called Swan beautiful glitter absolutely glorious now see I'm bringing that purple up the flamingo pretty far up in to the dove in the center there I'm going to try to not lose the dove going up, but again, if I don't, if I open my eyes completely, you lose it. And I'm not going to do all this and then lose it. It's kind of foolish. Okay, what I'm going to try to do now is kind of match my shapes. Kindly remember, I normally wear glasses. And when I close this eye, which is my better eye, I'm left with this little squirt, which is not always as accurate a guide for me while I'm trying to do these things. Not too bad so far. Alright, now I'm going to take this darker one here that's called Starling and I think this time in this case I'm going to hit it with the spritz. Now this is my homemade quote unquote setting spray. And then I'm going to dry off my ferrule. You don't want your ferrule to be wet when you go back to the palette because it'll run right into your color and create hard pan. And you don't want to leave the ferrule wet because if the fluid runs down into your brush, it can loosen the glue that keeps the bristles in the ferrule. Okay, Brush Anatomy 101 for anybody who doesn't know what I'm talking about. This metal piece is the ferrule, the handle, the bristles. These bristles, even though the ferrule is like on this one, it's been crimped a little bit to be flat. That's more to shape the bristles than it is to keep it in. 
between the handle and the base of the bristle, somewhere in here, is a lot of glue. If you want to keep your bristles in your brush, you do not let them soak in water. If, when you're washing your brushes, you wash them, you rinse them, you get them out, uh, you don't leave them to soak, you get them out, get them to start it to dry as soon as possible, preferably hanging like this. Now, if you mess up and get water into your palette or setting spray or whatever else, you are very likely going to get what's called hard pan and you are not going to like it because you can't pick up the color if it's gone hard pan. Now, for a few times, you should be able to scrape enough of the hard pan off. be able to rescue some of your color. However, if you keep getting it wet, that hard pan will go all the way to the bottom. And once it hits the bottom, you've lost it. The only way to be able to fix it at that point is beyond most of us, unless we actually have our own makeup studio and lab. Because what you're going to be doing is popping that crunchy, crusty thing out, completely milling it down and repressing it to get it back into the pan and usable, if you can. There's no guarantee that that would work, even for a professional makeup creator. So I would suggest just take care of your makeup collection to start with and not get it wet. And take care of your brushes and not get them wet and leave them wet. Like I said, you know, you can wash them, all of that. You just got to remember to take care of them, make sure they get dry quickly hang them up to dry, hang them up with the bristles pointing down so that any excess fluid is running away from where the glue is going to be. That is such a pretty purple. Yes, I'm trying to get over being annoyed with purple. It's sort of working. At least a little. I mean, we're not going to be able to get rid of it all immediately. I'm working on it, all right? Okay. Now, let's see. There's one. Smaller brush. I'm going to pick up that absolutely glorious color, Swan. trying to avoid spraying my little dog because he's under my feet and he just won't get out of the way. He is determined. Now the thing about Swan is it's not only that it's, be, it's a gold glitter, but it picks up color from the other colors because it's a bit sheer. Yes, I'm going to do something to dress up the center of the eye a little bit with one of the other colors, but only a little bit.
I love swan. Swan is the prettiest thing. It just really is. in the bottom of the palette and it's this one it's called Robin yes it's a blue I've been working with purples and it's a blue but I'm just going to kind of tap that around here in the center or something I'm not going to go in and just smear or try and overly blend. Okay, and for anybody who is wondering, no, that's not, those are little rhinestones set into the ferrule that is not fluid. At some point I will do a tutorial on how to make my version of cheap setting spray because it works well and cheap but effective is always good. probably going to go back into the original deeper purple the flamingo and mix some of that in with a spray of wet too so we don't completely lose that middle tone The main thing about the setting spray that I'm using, that I make my own of, is that glycerin is one of the things about setting spray that makes it kind of more sticky. to help keep your shadow on. It's kind of like when detergent and if you're if you've been through Homac, they will deter tell you that detergent makes water wetter, which helps get it to loosen up nasty stuff. And this kind of does the same kind of thing. It makes the water a little wetter and gives a little more traction to the color. Glycerin, and what I use is vegetable glycerin, is basically just a water-soluble plant-based oil. And I only need a few drops of the glycerin to effect the particular change I'm trying to get. It's like you can spray your shimmers with water. And for some people that works just fine. 
or you can do like a lot of people do and you know use a glitter glue or another layer of eye primer or whatever to try to get the effect you're going for and that's kind of up to you and how your eyes work how your skin works how your techniques apply and your own personal judgment yes you're allowed to use your own personal judgment on this stuff I can I am showing you the way I do it and let me give you a clue I don't always do it the exact same way each time and I don't always want to it kind of depends on how I'm feeling right then okay kind of pat this over that so that we don't have quite so harsh a line there and literally just pat because you're trying to blend the edge not necessarily just erase the edge alrighty going to where's the stuff there's the stuff I'm picking up some concealer and you see all these red places in here because I really don't want to put on a bunch of foundation right now for one thing yeah it's 11 o'clock at night I'm going to be taking all this stuff back off I got red places here and some stuff there a little bit here because my lips have gotten chapped some it's flipping cold here in Oregon I'm on the southeast side at the edge of the Elkhorn Mountains which is the local section of the mountain range and how they've called it and no I haven't done my eyebrows yet I have a tendency lately to let them go until I figure out exactly how dark my eye looks going to end up or how intense and then I kind of match the intensity of the eyebrow to the intensity of the look rather than just do a big heavy eyebrow because if I did ju just did the big heavy eyebrow I'm sorry all I can think about when I do just straight up do a big heavy eyebrow from the get-go all I can think about is bless me it's Groucho Marx if you're not old enough to know who that is go Google him he just no a little powder now this is what I do pretty often most of the time if all I'm doing is like running to the grocery or something or we're doing you know just general errands I have my moisturizer and everything on and my SPF on and unless I'm doing something that I want a really solid finish 
that you would get from a a foundation I just don't do the foundation I do a little cover up of the red and throw some powder at it all right now let's see what I'm gonna do with the under eye I think I'm going to throw some completely different color in here. I'm going to use this green called Parakeet. And then, I'll take some of that Dove Purple that I started with that's still up here. And I'm just going to blend this out just a tiny bit with that Dove Purple. Now one of the problems that I have on occasion whenever I try to use purple is if I don't do it just right I end up looking like somebody socked me in the eye. So we will have to see how this goes. And for the absolute heck of it, and better known as just cause I can, I'm going to take this color right here called Phoenix. And I'm going to do this. Just cause it's me. And I'm being contrary tonight. I like the idea of occasionally just sneaking up and putting a completely off-the-scheme color on those inner corners. And besides, if there's a bright orange in here and they didn't want me to use it, why'd they leave it? That's a gorgeous red orange. It really is. Now, some people fuss because we stop the video before we do things like the eyeliner and all of that stuff and things like the base. Or we start with the base and go, hey, that's all you get. And other people go, but it takes so long. And it makes the video so long when you do the whole face. And I've had people tell me they like some of my longer videos, which completely flies in the face of all of the, the advice from YouTube. So I'm going to do a few where you're stuck with the whole shebang. And I'm going to do some more that where I cut away and do these bits off camera. And we'll see which ones you guys watch and say something polite about and such. And I figure if I keep doing a few long ones and a few less long ones, because God knows I don't do really short videos in most cases, we will see which ones you like better. And then once you know, because I'll give you a clue that it's going to be long and chatty, plus you can look at the timestamp on it. If you don't want to watch a long video, then don't watch the long video. Um, it's not going to hurt my feelings. 
if you like short videos, watch my short videos. If you like long videos, watch my long videos. If you like a variety, you got it. A little bit of green eye pencil to go with that parakeet green shadow. I've also still got to remember to do pictures of Lolly. I'd have the per perfect picture right now. She's all curled up on the bed seeping. But you wouldn't see her little face. Because she's got it tucked into a blanket. Got a hair or something on my nose. Thanks, dog. Okay. Let me remind you. Shaky hands, bad vision, leaning into a mirror is necessary. And that's the most the, the most popular version of a wing I manage which is just get a little ways out and flick up. Because when I have my eyes like this, it's real easy to do the wing thing. When I open my eyes, the creases come all the way out here and tear up a wing in a skinny minute. There was a net from Annette's Beauty Corner who has also got hooded eyes but she is significantly younger than I am I have probably got 30 years on her at least and her skin is much smoother And her hood doesn't come way out. <laughs> and she's got this absolutely glorious version of how to do a wing liner. And I think it's gorgeous. I just don't think, after trying a couple of times, that I'm necessarily going to be using it. I've got one version of how to do a wing liner that I picked up from Wing Goss, and it, it's, you kind of cheat. Excuse me. You kind of cheat it a little. And you maybe put the black line with the liners like that, and then instead of doing like with the purple color and doing a cat eye out this way you use a dark mat like one of the blacks or you know something like a dark gray and you create that shape and then you bring it back in so that it looks like you've carried the line out here and then made the big chunky bit of the wing so that you've got that big definition that goes along with a wing liner. Okay, yep. Yeah. Sometimes I put lashes on, but very infrequently. Because party lashes, the really big ones that are easy to see. Ugh. That's another reason I don't always do this on camera with this stuff. Because if I poke myself in the eye with the wand, you don't get to watch me have to clean all this up. But, if I do the more floofy lashes. 
I can't wear my glasses. And until and if I can afford to get contacts, and if the eye doctor informs me that I'm allowed to have contacts at this point, some of the autoimmune issues can cause trouble with that. Dry eyes, that kind of thing, yeah. Dry eyes is definitely not conducive to having contacts. We just have to find out if mine are too dry. So far, so good. I'm going to put this down and start doing some of the other stuff while this book dries so I can get rid of it. We're changing seasons, which means my allergies must act up. It just it has to be done. There is no other way around. Just ask me. Okay. A little elf contour and bronze. I use the darker matte that's in one corner. And do a little bit over here. And a little under here. Basically, this is just trying to throw a little more shadow on this extra skin down here. Does it always work now? I know it's still there. Anybody who's standing close can tell it's still there. But this does kind of help take some of the frog belly pale off of it so that it's not quite as obvious you know you, you, sometimes you just gotta do and then a little bit of the lighter color that's up here in this corner And I go across up here to kind of warm things up just a little bit. If I'm going to a party or something, I've got a bit of shiny here that I use to go with the bronzer. And yes, I mostly go around a bitty tattoo. I like her showing up just as she is. This has got to be one of my favorite things. It's just a quad bronzer palette. It's got two mattes. One light, one dark. Two two shimmers, one light, one dark. Now, the darker one in the shimmers, I tend to use more for eyeshadow than I do for face makeup. Just because. Well, partially because I'm frog belly white. It's like somebody hits me in the face with a bowl of flour, I'll disappear. And since I'm having fun doing shop my stash kind of stuff, I got out my Laura Geller that Miss Nona sent me. Miss no between Miss Nona and Miss Anya Pink Sweets. The two of them have so very generously sent me tons of their duplicates and, you know, all that. And I've got an incredible collection at this point. 
because of that. I've also managed to add to my collection because I won two giveaways this year. I'm a happy child. Debbie Knobloch did a giveaway that I won. And it's the Natasha Denona Mini Leela. I love that palette. First thing I did was ask her to do a do, do a a collaboration with me using that palette. And the other giveaway was from Granny Makeup, Miss Pamela. Miss Pamela was giving away Charlotte Tilbury. I got one of the Charlotte Tilbury face palettes with the blush and the bronze and the powder and, and, and highlight and all this other stuff, which is just delightful, and a mascara. Also Charlotte Tilbury. I love them. But I needed to go back and look at some of my older stuff too. So I've been going through my palettes and my other bits and pieces, you know, like the blush and the highlights. And I've got one highlighter that Pink Sweet sent me that it's incredible. It's blue. It's a revolution highlighter. So I've been able to try lots of different makeup from lots of different companies because of the generosity of people doing giveaways and the generosity of some people who just plain go, here, you can have this. Now, Anya, Pink Sweets, Anya, and I have known each other for quite some time and it was we met each other face first years ago so there's a little bit of a different dynamic there than there is with some of the other people I work with so yeah we've got a little bit of a closer dynamic on some fronts because we've known each other and we've known each other in real life not just through the tube her brother it was originally her brother that was a friend of mine and then I got to be friends with his wife and between the two of them, Anya and I got to meet because her brother's wife at the time, she's since passed away, and it's like his, her brother's wife was her best buddy for like forever. So we all ended up meeting up that way originally. And shared experiences. Now see, you let it dry and you can take a brush and get rid of it. You don't have to. Don't try to do it immediately. It will just smear horrendously. It will be nasty. Catch these lower lashes real quick. I know some of you already know these things, like don't try to take it off immediately. Not everybody does, though. So, you know, I'm trying to be at least a little educational. Yeah, just a little bit. A little bit. A little, a little bit. Alrighty. Now, 
This is a clean color lipstick from their Femme line. And this is called Burnt Sugar. It's so pretty. that bit taken care of. Now this estate highlighter called Do Me Lit came in one of my subscriptions. Well, I only really get one subscription, which is Ipsy. And this one came in one of the bags. Now, I like this particular highlighter mainly because it's not blinding to the stars. So if I'm just doing, you know, like I said, doing a little something something, this is gorgeous. It's got just the faintest glow. And it disappears if your face is not hitting the light right which is just fine with me. And I tend to run a little bit of the highlighter right along the brow so that it hits the brow bone. So that Dove Lavender picks up a little shine. Yes, I'm trying to get used to where the camera is and where the light is because of the way I'm doing things and the way I rearrange things. The camera is like right here but the ring light is up there. Now, I was having trouble with the ring light when it was in front of the camera the way people normally use it because I was getting way too much bounce back. So my little cheapo ring light is now up above. My camera is below. I have the room lights on. There's a little bounce from my TV screen over here. Well, my monitor screen over here. Because that's where the um, controls for the camera are. Because it's a webcam connected directly into the computer. Eventually, I may get a different camera. I may not. I started off with my phone. You know, this particular webcam wasn't that expensive. And I'm going, it's better resolution than my phone. My phone's a little on the old side. But that's the way you do things. You get stuff as you have the wherewithal. If anybody's thinking about starting a YouTube channel, don't wait till you have the perfect camera. I used a telephone. And then when I started having trouble with the sound on the telephone, there's a $7 little phone setup that you can pick up that's got earbuds and a little microphone that's on a little stand. The microphone's only this big, the whole thing. But it looks like a miniature stand mic. And you just put that closer to you and don't wear the earbuds because you're not trying to talk to somebody back and forth on your phone. You're just trying to make sure they can hear you. It works. Seven bucks. Picked it up off of Amazon. I know Amazon is problematic, but I live out in the backside of beyond. There's no stores really close enough to here that have anything. The ring light that I use was 17 bucks from Amazon and it's got a little clamp set up that would hold the phone so that I could aim the phone at myself and not have to worry about holding the phone 
and trying to do stuff with my makeup. You want to play YouTube? Start simple. Don't forget to tell me what you think. Be good. Mm -hmm.